Okay. All right, so the first one is France. Basically, the country France bans children from being smacked. They over, they're overturning a ruling, uh, what do you call it, disagreeing with the decision from eight, the 1800s. And apparently the conservative far right disagree with the decision. Basically, the far right apparently wants to smack kids. So, how do you, do you agree with the ruling not to be able to smack your children? I feel parenting in its own right is very difficult. And most of the time it's a choice that many people make willingly. However, there's a lot of, like, uh, there's a lot of, uh, scientists who have done studies on whether or not, like, you know, physical interaction, like spanking or whatnot, affects a kid's mental state, which has some truth to it. It really does. So I feel like, um, that you should always... You should always look to understand what your child is is doing or where they're coming from before you make a decision on how to apprehend their behavior. I don't think that people should hit other people regardless of what their relationship is because it only breeds more violence in the long run. That's a very good answer. I definitely agree with it. Yeah, there definitely are studies that, what do you call it, do what you said. It spots is agreeing. <laughs> uh, what do you call it? Yeah, definitely a great answer to that question. But how do you think uh, Ugandan knuckles punish their kids? Um, well, I was, I was born in Uganda, but I was raised in Wakanda. <laughs> so I wouldn't really know too much about that. But I would hope that they treat their young ones as, with as much respect as we do in Wakanda. Wakanda forever. <laughs> yeah, I would hope so too. It's just I would think the Ebola might get into their brains and they might like kill each other over stuff. Too much Ebola is not a very good thing, but the right amount of Ebola is good for you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Alrighty, but, but all right. So the last question for this one is: Why do you think the article goes out of its way to mention the far right, painting it as an advocating, ab, sorry, as an advocate for child beatings? Well, a lot of a lot of modern politics nowadays it is based on separating people from each other. A lot of people have varying opinions on on what you know how they should handle things but <laughs> what what, what most politicians try to get most of the people to do is to not see the other side as people but as just a group or a face of a group that is trying to oppose them or take away something that they feel that they should have when really it's just two groups of people having a different opinion that honestly should be talking to each other and not through politicians. That definitely makes a lot of sense because I think a lot of people just complain about politicians and yet the politicians are kind of the spokesman for them. But at the same time, I guess, like what you just said, you'd rather have people having a dialogue between each other because if you're just letting the politicians do make all the rules and stuff, which technically that's what they're elected to do, it can become an issue because they only see right they only see right and left, not any kind of middle ground or compromise. Yeah, that's why there's a lot of people, like myself included, who feel very um we feel like driftwood because there are things about, you know, certain sides we, we agree on. And then there are certain things that we don't agree with, and we're kind of like this, this middle, this middle place, that not a lot of people seem to go to because they want it to be one way or the other. But life isn't always black and white, you know. There's there's a little bit of gray in there too. There's a little bit more going on than than just, you know, one or two. 
there's more options than just A or B. Yeah, definitely, that definitely makes sense. There's always got to be, you always got to have, as they say, a plan. Well, they don't really, as they say, but a plan C is always nice. Don't put your eggs all in one basket. Yeah. Alrighty, so the final question, because we only have two questions for today, is totally off topic from the first one, but it should be pretty interesting, so I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. So, what is all these pillows coming from? <laughs> this knuckles. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright, so the final question is basically a, <clears throat> a cannibal corpse guitarist, and cannibal corpse is like a metal band, is a metal band. So basically, Cannibal Corpse yeah. guitarist enters someone's house illegally, shoves a woman, and then just walks into the spots. Are you okay? Yes. <laughs> so let me just restart the question. So Cannibal Corpse guitarist, uh, what do you call it, enters someone's house illegally, shoves a woman, then heads to the backyard. And then he tries to assault police officers as he was arrested. At the same time... You sure you're okay? Alrighty. So at the same time, his house was lit on fire due to some kind of dispute with other people. And he had two military flamethrowers inside while his house ex pretty much exploded in flames. So why would a heavy metal guitarist have flamethrowers in his house? Mm, well, there could be many reasons. You can't really understand completely what somebody is, you know with somebody who somebody is unless you, you've spent time with them it could be a thing where those flamethrowers were like a thing that they used to brag like oh look at me i've got these really cool things that nobody else would usually have they're super dangerous and spooky ooky, spooky or he could be somebody who just likes to collect things or he could be a very inwardly violent person that might have tried to use them at some point but you can't really know for sure unless that person really says why but honestly I don't think a normal person regardless of how famous they are should have that type of weaponry in their house <laughs> And also expect their house not to blow up. <laughs> because, oh boy. Those are some flamethrowers. Yeah, it's definitely... I don't know, well, he is a cannibal corpse guitarist, so I guess it might be very metal of him to have some flamethrowers on hand. It could be well, a, vibranium is metal, thing. and we don't give it to everybody. No, well, that's actually a good question. How did... Who sold them flamethrowers? Yeah, that's why, um, that's why there's a lot of debate on, like, uh, like, what kind of weapons should be sold to, to real people, um, in the States because of, you know, like, bump stocks and stuff. And there's a lot of people who say, oh, gun control, we shouldn't have any guns. And then there's people who should say, we should be allowed to have whatever guns we want. And like I said before, there's a lot of those people who are in the middle who are like, oh, we don't really have to go zero to a hundred or a hundred to zero, you know. But there, there should be a line where like, some random person shouldn't be able to buy military grade flamethrowers and put them in their house. <laughs> so what what do you think his intentions other than the his house blowing up at the same time he's robbing somebody? What do you think his intentions were for entering somebody's house and just randomly walking through the backyard? Um well, it's impossible to say without knowing the whole story. He could have been inebriated. Um, he couldn't, he could have been out of his mind, he could have, uh, some mental issues, or he could just be a generally messed up person who wanted to, you know, go take something from somebody else. There are, there like are people, there are 
<laughs> There's a thing that I like to say. There are there are bad people who can do good things as well as good people who can do bad things. Yeah, that definitely makes yeah. sense. You never know when your heroes. Like Abdo. Like Abdo. <laughs> There's. Yeah. You, you should always you should always look at the information given and make an opinion of your own based on the information given. But also, you should take the time to look more into things and not just look at the surface of the issue. Because too many people just look at the news and they're like, oh wow, that guy was insane, or oh wow, they, I'm glad that he's not around anymore or something, but maybe what his actions were telling us is that he needed, he needed help. Yeah, it's definitely a very good point. So my very last question is basically, do you think heavy metal has a bad influence on people? Um, too much of anything can have a bad influence on people, but as far as, like, artistic things go, absolutely not. I don't think that because you enjoy a certain video game or a certain type of music, that makes you... The type of person to go ahead on? and do something wrong. There's a lot of people who really like uh, violent video games that are super down to earth and nice people. They just enjoy the game for what it is. Just as music is an artistic expression of one's like true self, and some people just really either like the aesthetic. Of, of that type of music or it just speaks to them in a way that no other music or art could but just because something seems really spooky or or crazy doesn't necessarily mean that's all it's cracked up to be like this this whole world right here it's all pink and kittens and candy and pillows but that's what's on the surface if you sit in here for a little bit and you listen to the sounds and you and you sit around it's actually a place of peace and comfort oh for a second i thought you were going to tell me something completely opposite of it <laughs> i really like this, candy it is the voice of reason yeah i, I know she's very uh, what do you call it very articulate I definitely agree with Many people assume because I'm a Wakandan Knuckles or a Knuckles in general that I'm just somebody who likes to meme all the time or I, I just like to annoy people, but I'm the opposite. I like to take something that has been, you know, shown in a bad light and show people that not everything about what you see on the surface has to be bad. You can make it into something great. You can make, you can make it into what you want, and you perception think? is reality for most people. So if somebody sees somebody like me going around and annoying people and being really toxic, well then they're just gonna perceive the rest of us as toxic. So I try to bring the balance towards all of that, and sometimes people don't appreciate it but that's okay because i'm not here to please everybody i'm just here to let people know that that i care about them and that you can you can you can do the good even if people don't see you as the good that, that is definitely you are one of the brightest knuckles that i've spoken to in quite a long time no no you <laughs> definitely definitely good for the I mean some people call this a meme but I call it a way of life and I think you're definitely a good example what I was trying to be insane to everybody <laughs> that's what Spots has been trying all the time <laughs> I like I like to consider us more of like more of like a family Aww. because technically the whole meme is is about being being this this large family of knuckles and you know 
we're looking for our queen, or we're we're trying to tell people like, hey, we're we're here, we're here, even though we're really small, we're here. We are here. We uh, never. Well, mm. excuse me. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, I like the thank you for your time. I really appreciate it, and hopefully this message Wakanda that. Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. Yes, 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 y